Good morning, everyone. It is great to be back with you this morning. I'm so excited to be beginning a new unit today called The Kingdom to Come. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at heaven and, and what Jesus says about heaven. It's going to be exciting, and we're going to see some of the things that he promises us when we get to heaven. Um, so why don't we pray, and then we'll jump right in. Lord, I uh, come to you now, and I thank you for this beautiful day. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the rain you've given us this week. Uh, Lord, I pray for these students as they are preparing for school, also for, for their teachers uh, and their parents as they are preparing um, to help teach as well. Lord, I just pray that um, you would be glorified in all of it. Lord, I pray today as we learn about different parables um, that we can see what you mean when you speak in parables and, and how that relates to our life today. We love you so much, Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So like I said, um, today we're going to talk about kingdom parables. And our, our story today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 13. So I would encourage you to turn there and read because there's a lot of different parables that we are going to be talking about today. Uh, we're not going to read through the whole chapter, but I wanted to encourage you uh, to read through it and, and read about the different parables that Jesus talks about today in our story. Um, so, as I said, we are starting a new unit today, and that means that we have a new big picture question. The big picture question for our unit is this. How does God care for his creation? How does God care for his creation? He loves and rules over his creation according to his perfect plan. And we see that all through scripture. We see how God loves us. We see how God will correct us when we have gone down the wrong path, when we have done something we're not supposed to do. God will correct us. And that's part of him caring for us. It's just like your parents. When you do something you're not supposed to, your parents will correct you. And sometimes that might be with a timeout, that might be with um, taking screens away or um, <laughs> a spanking. I don't know if many kids get spanked um, nowadays, but um, that was a, a pretty big threat back when I was growing up. I didn't like it very much, so I learned to be really good. Um, you know, it's crazy. Uh, my little brother Andrew, he got a lot of spankings and he's turned out to be quite a guy. Um, but those are our corrections. Those are ways that our parents will correct us. Uh, when you're in school, if you're working on math homework and you get a problem wrong, your teacher will correct you and she'll show you or he'll show you how to get to the right answer. And that's just like in life. Sometimes we, we do stuff we're not supposed to do or sometimes we make a wrong choice and God is there to correct us and he corrects us in many different ways. Um, the biggest way is with the Holy Spirit. And when you're a Christian and you, you do something against God's will, you'll feel the Holy Spirit convicting you and you'll be like, man, I shouldn't have done that. I know I shouldn't have done that. Um, and that's something that we, we have to remember is that, that when we get corrected, it's because people love us. It's not because they're trying to be mean to us. It's not because they're out to get us. It's because they love us and they want the best for us and they want to see us succeed in every part of our life. The Bible's made up of different stories, many different stories, and we've talked about a lot of them. They all fit together to tell one big story, though. How God rescues sinners through His Son, Jesus. And in the New Testament, we see how God used Jesus. He brought Jesus to earth in human form. Jesus spent three years teaching people about God and His kingdom before He died on the cross. And that's something that is always incredible to me. Jesus lived 33 years on earth, but really his ministry was from 30 to 33. So three years of his life, he spent changing the world, really ministering to people. Now, like I said, today's Bible story is from Matthew chapter 13. And I just want to give you guys a little bit of background and, and what's happening. So Jesus is teaching the people and he begins to speak in parables. And if you don't know what a parable is, a parable is just a story uh, that helps explain a point. Um, 
and it helps teach people about the kingdom of God. And we're going to learn about several parables um, in our story today. Uh, but Jesus was telling the people these stories and these parables to what God's kingdom is like. He compared heaven to a mustard seed. And if you don't know what a mustard seed is, it is like the smallest seed you can imagine. And I remember uh, one of my favorite um, things about Jesus is, is he uses this mustard seed and he says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, so really small, and you tell a mountain to jump into the ocean, the mountain will hurl itself into the ocean. <laughs> And I've always thought about that, and I'm like, man, what would happen if I went up to a mountain and I said, jump into the ocean? And it did. It would terrify me. But that's what Jesus says. That much faith, that is what could happen. And so, I don't know. Do we have that much faith? I've never tried to move a mountain like that. Uh, but it is something that you think about. Uh, but what God is really saying, what Jesus is really saying is that we just need to have a little faith. We need to have faith in Him in the small things and then faith in Him in the big things as well. Um, so, the mustard seed, as we, we're going to see in the story, the mustard seed grows into a tree. So it goes from this, this little seed to a tree that is 20 feet tall and 20 feet wide. And it, it has birds and nests and all these different things. Um, and then... God also talks about yeast, which is something you use when you make bread, and how when you make bread and you use yeast, it will rise. Uh, some of you may have seen that if your parents bake at home or, or grandparents bake when you get to visit them. You see how it, how it rises as it bakes. Why don't we go ahead and dive on into our Bible story video for this week? <laughs> One day, Jesus went out and sat by the sea. Large crowds of people gathered around him, so he got into a boat and sat down. All the people stood on the shore. Then Jesus told the people parables, or stories, to teach them about the kingdom of God. Jesus' disciples asked him, Why do you teach in parables? Jesus answered, not everyone will understand the hidden truths about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus reminded them about some of the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Some people look, but they do not see. Hmm. They hear, but they do not listen or understand. Oh. Jesus made these prophecies come true. Jesus said, you are blessed because you do understand. Jesus told a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a man planted in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it grows taller than the garden plants. It becomes a tree and the birds come and build nests in the branches. Jesus continued, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven or yeast that a woman mixed into 50 pounds of flour. The leaven makes the dough rise. Jesus told another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field that a man found. He reburied it, and then he joyfully sold everything he had and bought that field. Then Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine oh. pearls. When he found one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. When Jesus finished teaching the crowds, he left that place and went to Nazareth. The kingdom of God is growing in the world. The kingdom is valuable and worth giving everything for. While we wait for Jesus to return and fully set up his kingdom, we carry out the mission of telling others about King Jesus who rescues sinners. Man, how awesome is that? To, to see these different parables, to see how great God's kingdom is. God's kingdom 
is more valuable than anything. So think about the most expensive thing you've ever seen, the most expensive thing that maybe you've ever bought or your parents have ever bought. And then just imagine that that's nothing compared to what God's kingdom is going to be like, what the value is of heaven. Um, you guys remember last week we, we talked about the story. I told you about a story about King David when he donated all of his gold, which would be, it was like $6 billion worth of gold. That's nothing compared to the kingdom of heaven. The, the kingdom of heaven is paved with streets of gold. And I can't wait to be there. I can't wait to see Jesus face to face. Um, when I think about that, though, I think about seeing Jesus face to face. There's a song by the band called Mercy Me, and it's called I Can Only Imagine. And this is, this is my, one of my grandma's favorite songs, but I love the words. It says, will I stand in your presence or to my knees? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. And so when I think about that time when I get to go to heaven, what's my reaction going to be? Am I going to be jumping up and down? Am I going to be so excited? Or am I going to be so in awe of Jesus that I can't even speak? I can only imagine what that day will be like. And it's going to be such an exciting day. Um, the kingdom of God is growing in our world. It is valuable and worth giving everything for. Mm, that's important right there. So. When we value something, we're going to put our time, we're going to put our money, we're going to put our effort into it. Sharing Jesus' love and, and sharing the kingdom of heaven and, and helping people realize that Jesus came to save them, that is invaluable. So that means it's worth giving up everything. It's, it's not something that we need to hold back from. We need to go all in. So when you decide to follow Jesus, you just need to jump in the deep end and do a cannonball. Don't wait in at the shallow end. You want to be all in for the kingdom of heaven. While we wait for Jesus and his return to fully set up his kingdom, we carry out the mission of telling others about Jesus who rescues sinners. And that's what we all are. We are all sinners. It doesn't matter if it's a big sin or a little sin. All sin is equal in God's eyes. <clears throat> and as we are here on earth, we are called to tell people about Jesus and to help them repent from their sins. Something, um, I think I've told you guys all this before, but my kind of life motto is just a, a short phrase and it's this, it's love God, love people, and change the world. I can't do number three without doing numbers one and two. And that's my goal every day in life is to change the world. Um, and you can, <laughs> you can ask some of my college friends, they would tell you, I would tell that to them all the time, and their response would be, so what are you doing? How are you changing the world? And that was always really convicting to me because sometimes I wasn't <clears throat> doing all that I could to change the world. And, and changing the world starts with changing your own heart. And when you look in the mirror and you see what you're doing and you see how you can change and how the Lord can use you, then you're able to do it to other people. You're able to go and, and tell them and teach them about Jesus. And you change the world <clears throat> one person at a time. All right? We're not all going to be called to be missionaries or to be in ministry. But we are all called to go and share the gospel. And it doesn't have to be a profound thing. Okay, You can share the gospel in many different ways. Um, uh, you know, My favorite example, when I was in college, we used to do, uh, we would pay for the person behind us the drive through line. Um, and we would do it at Sonic during happy hour, so where people would go and get half price drinks. And I'm going to tell you, there were times when I was like, man, I don't have a dollar you know, in my bank account right now. I was in college, right? And I'm like, all right, God, I'm going to do this today. So I would do it, and the person behind me's total bill would be like 73 cents. And I'm like, okay, God, I need to trust you. Uh, you always provide. And that's something, as you guys get older, you will understand that God is always going to provide for us. You just need to keep plugging into Him and have faith that He's going to provide. Don't, don't worry about the rest of the world. Don't worry about the waves and the storm. Focus on Jesus. He will provide. He has a way for us. 
We are going to meet a new guy today for our missions moment. His name's Louis Soto, and he lives in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you don't know where Salt Lake City, Utah is, if you were to look at a map of the United States, it's in the southwest corner. So if you're looking at a map, it would be kind of towards the bottom left, um, Salt Lake City, Utah, and that is um, one of the biggest places for Mormons in the entire world is in Salt Lake City, Utah. So we're gonna see in just a minute what Lewis is doing in Salt Lake City. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and check out our missions moment video right now. In Salt Lake City, Utah, the number of people who don't know the truth about who Jesus is according to the Bible is huge. But Luis Soto and his wife Betty are missionaries living in Salt Lake City with a big vision to reach the people living there with the truth of the gospel. Everybody talk about growing a big church. I don't want big churches, I want more churches. Luis is not from Utah. He is originally from Puerto Rico, where most everyone speaks Spanish. This makes the Sotos just the right fit for reaching more than 40% of the Hispanic population living in Salt Lake City. They are already seeing God do some amazing things through the Hispanic community in their city, like in the life of Jose. He is a new leader in our church. I came to the Utah from El Salvador. I found work here as a, a graphic design. I thought I was coming to America just to work. I did not realize God had another plan. Jose loves Jesus. He has a passion to see the, the people change it. I never think myself as a pastor. But I had been at Louis Church. He came to me about helping start a new church in an, another community. That was something I never pictured myself doing. But Luis is teaching me. And now I think I'm ready. God is using Luis, Betty, and people like Jose to start churches and share the gospel. When you give to missions through your church, you are part of the Soto's big vision in Salt Lake City. I have a dream to see very soon new churches everywhere in Salt Lake City, Utah. This is our passion, this is our goal. I live for that. This is the Great Commission. I think that's awesome what Lewis is doing in Salt Lake City. He's telling people about Jesus and he's changing the world. And that's what we can do right here in Annapolis. We can tell people about Jesus and we can change the world. Um, our, our greatest mission field, and I've told you guys this before, our greatest mission field is when we walk out of our front door of our house. Because that's the people we see every day, the people that know us well, know what we do, what we say, how we act. That's our biggest mission field. And so every day we have a chance to show people Jesus' love. Every day we have a chance to, to share what he's done in our life. And I pray that you guys do that. I pray that you take those opportunities and you, you accept them and you preach and you tell people what God has done in your life. Um, Jesus tells us to come to him like little children who are excited. And I remember when I got saved and I got baptized, I was eight years old and I couldn't stop telling people about Jesus. I was probably pretty annoying, especially for an eight-year-old. Uh, I just remember being so excited. And that's the fire I want to have every day, is, is whatever I do in life, I want to live for Jesus. I want to show people what Jesus has done in my life. Because that's the best way. When you live a life that is reflective of Jesus, people are going to know you're different. And they're going to be like, man, what do they have? I want that. I want to know what he has. How can I get it? And that's when we have the opportunity to share Jesus. So we have a new key passage for our unit, and it comes from the book of Colossians, which is in the New Testament. 
Um, I, I was in a thing called Bible drill when I was in middle school and basically what we did was we had to learn the books of the Bible. We learned different passages. We learned um, verses and and the way that I always could remember where Colossians was at was we had a, an acronym called Go Eat Popcorn. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. So that's how I would always know where I was at um, when I was looking for the book of Colossians was Go Eat Popcorn. Something simple and something easy. So Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14 are our key passage for this unit. And it says this, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Wow. Um, Jesus forgave us of our sins. And I want you guys to know that there's no sin, there's nothing that you've done that Jesus can't forgive. I was actually listening to a podcast this morning as I drove into church and they were talking about forgiving people and it was awesome they used some great examples they said you know if Jesus can forgive Peter who betrayed him and, and basically helped lead him to the cross if he can forgive Saul who turned into Paul who was killing Christians for being Christians he can forgive us and he has forgiven us you just have to tell him you have to say Lord please forgive me for what I've done please forgive me Lord please take my sin and here's the great thing. Whatever sin is you're struggling with, you can overcome it with Jesus. Satan's going to tempt you. But guess what? Satan has never beaten Jesus. Jesus is undefeated. And he's never going to lose. So when you, when you put your faith in Jesus, you're on the winning team. That's all you need to know. You're on the winning team. Before we can trust in Jesus, we are dead in our sin. And we are separated from God. Everyone who trusts him and his forgiveness has ever. He frees us from sin and brings us into the kingdom of heaven. So as we close today, as we prepare to pray, I just want you guys to know that when you accept Jesus, that means you get to go to heaven. When you put your faith and your hope in Jesus, that's when you get to go to heaven. And I want you to know that there is no magical prayer that gets you to heaven. There is no amount of good deeds or helping people that gets you to heaven. The only way to heaven is to put your faith and trust in Jesus. Now, when people do that, they do pray and they say, Lord, forgive my sins. I, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I need you. But that prayer is not what's going to save you. It's your heart. When you, when you go all in and you put Jesus right here in your heart, the Holy Spirit will walk with you. And you guys know the story. And I'll tell you again, when I was eight years old, I distinctly remember the day that Jesus came into my life and changed my life forever. I was outside playing with my brother Andrew after school and I felt this tug at my heart and I knew that it was Jesus coming into my heart. And so I remember telling my mom, like, we gotta go to church right now. She said, we'll go tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday. We have church tomorrow night. And I was like, no mom. like now we got to go so she took me to church and and I remember going to my pastor's office and just telling him and, and he was so excited for me and I'm telling you guys when you make that decision it is the best decision you make and if if you've made that decision awesome if you haven't and you're feeling like you like you feel God and you want him to come into your heart talk to your parents talk to me and when you make that decision have your parents call me because I want to celebrate with you because it is the best decision you're ever going to make. Let us pray and then we will wrap up for today. God, we confess we are hesitant to give up all the things we can have here on earth for your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you would help us understand what is true and what is right. Help us understand, Lord, that your kingdom is the most valuable treasure that we can have. Uh, it's growing and it's moving, Lord. Your kingdom is moving throughout earth. And I pray that we look forward to the day when, when Jesus will return to save us and to set up your kingdom, to set up heaven forever. Lord, use us today. Use these kids to help further your kingdom. Lord, we love you so much. It's in your name that we pray. 
Amen. All right, guys. Listen, I am praying for you as school starts. I know it's going to be a little bit different uh, being some of us are going to be online in the fall. But guess what? We're still going to get through it. Okay, there's going to be challenges. I want to encourage you with a couple of things, okay? I want you to work hard. Okay, I want you to give it your best. I want you to really show grace to your parents who are going to maybe be staying home with you and helping you. They want the best for you. They're on your side, okay? Don't get upset with them. Show them grace, okay? And, and just work hard, okay? Um, and put, you know, just, just trust in the Lord with all that you do. I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you next Sunday morning. Have a great week.